the mystery of beauty my name is Olusegun Mukwolu and in this video I'll be sharing with us on the mystery of beauty what exactly is beauty why are we so consumed with beauty why are some people very beautiful and some people are regarded not to be beautiful why do we say somebody is ugly and then why do we say somebody is beautiful? What is the mystery about this? What makes a woman, for example, to be extremely attractive to a lot of men and another woman with the same body component? Men don't find her attractive. Men are not running after her. What really makes the difference? What exactly do people see? So, by the grace of God, I'm, I want to give an overview that I've titled The Mystery of Beauty. What exactly is beauty? What should we learn from beauty? And we can only learn from the Word of God. We can only learn from the Scriptures. So if you are ready, let's look at a few things about, uh, about beauty. The, the first thing is, you see, there are three spheres of beauty. By that I mean the soul can be beautiful, the body and the spirit. When we talk about soul, we are talking about the character of a person. The way the person behaves, the way the person reacts. You know, you can you can, you don't know that you can see somebody react in certain situations and feel, wow, this person is lovely. We are not talking about the physical look of that person. It's just the character. So that's the beauty of the soul. You can talk about the beauty of the body. That's one most people are familiar with, you know. And then... That's, that's the skin. That's the, the physical structure. The, the looks of that person and so on. And then there is the beauty of the spirit. That's the heart. A heart that pleases God. A heart that is devoid of sin and unrighteousness. Blessed are the pure in heart. You know, that's a, that, that's a beautiful heart. But generally, let me, lay, let me give this background. When human beings say, this person is beautiful, this person is not beautiful. I want to tell you that they are making judgments. And the reason is that <clears throat> over time, there are features, there are certain characteristics and looks that men have come to judge, to accept as beautiful. Although to a large extent, it still depends on individual, our fantasy and our, our own personal judgment of beauty. So, Actually, saying somebody is beautiful or ugly is a is a human is a human judgment. Let me illustrate it this way: If you look at a gorilla, we say a gorilla is is beautiful. You may say gorilla is ugly, right? The ape, you may say it's ugly. But guess what? God made the ape to look exactly like that. God made gorilla baboon to look exactly the way they look. It's not because they are ugly. It's because that is the beauty their creator gave to them. That's the way the creator wants them to look. So they are not ugly. It's human being that defines them as being ugly. So the same thing happens to, uh, to human being. We say somebody is beautiful because that's the way we judge the person's beauty. And then we say somebody is ugly. We've forgotten that God wants variety. Look at, we have... Uh, we have white Caucasians, we have, we have Chinese, we have Arab, we have Africans, we have Indians, you know, we have all manner of, and we are all different. Even when you come to Africa, even though we all look black, we are different. I, as a Nigerian, for example, I can tell that this is a Ghanaian. I can easily tell when I see a Ghanaian that this is a Ghanaian, even though we are both blacks, you know. And even within Nigeria, I can tell you this is an Ausa man, this, this is an Igbo man and, and so on. So... What we call beauty, let me just, in case I'm using that as I go on with this teaching, what we call beauty is what human society have over the time come to judge as beauty. So it's, it's a judgment. It's a human, it's a, it's a human judgment. For example, look at women who try to walk like, like animal. You know, cat walk. What is cat walk? You know, the way, the way the, 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 the lion, the tiger, the, all, all, all those cat family, the way they walk. Somebody learns it and brings it on the wrong way. And then they call it catwalk. They make it look like a big day. How can you go and learn? Animal does not... Does, does animal come to learn the way human being walks? 
In fact, I'm sure those animals will be happy to walk the way we walk. But how can human beings be happy the way they be happy to walk the way lion walks, the way a uh, tiger, leopard, cheetah, the way they walk? How can you how can you be happy the way a cat walks? And then you call it cat walks. Well, I'll get into all of that uh, later on as, as we as we go. On. So there are three spheres, the beauty of the body, of the soul, and of the spirit. The next is there are different kinds of um, beauty or side to beauty. There is natural beauty. There is natural beauty. Natural beauty. Now, I'm already dealing with the beauty of the body now. I'm dealing with the beauty of the body. That's why I had to give the background. There are three spheres. Don't forget it. The beauty of the soul, character, the beauty of the body, that's the skin, the beauty of the of the heart, that's the spirit. Now, I'm saying now that when you look at the body, which is where we focus mostly on, there is natural beauty. That means that person didn't do anything to his or herself. The person just looks that way. And people judge that person to be that beautiful. That is perceived beauty. That means that it is left to the perception of that person. The person just perceived you to be beautiful. You know, there could be reason for that. It, it's just a perception, you know, that is created. So it, it's, a, it's a perceived beauty, but it's not a real beauty. It's just a perceived beauty. There's, there's emotional beauty. That means that... When you become emotionally attached to somebody, the person suddenly becomes beautiful. There's societal beauty. That's the definition of society for beauty. For example, in some society, maybe if you're a tall girl, slim, you are said to be beautiful. Now, that's just the society that is making that up. There's individual beauty. That means everybody has their own definition. There are, there are women that love tall men. There are women who don't like tall men. There are, there are men that love are skinny women that are men that love their women to be full and big you know there is artificial beauty that is when you artificially make yourself to look in a way that you are acceptable in the society to be beautiful it could be through surgery it could be through makeup um it could be through addition of things to your body you know your clothing you may wear clothing that that disguises that you have a big tummy you may wear clothing that give impression you have a big breast you know Anything you do artificially to enhance it, that, that is that is the that is what I call beauty of the faith. Ha, beauty of the faith. That means that this person, this is the right beauty. This person sees you to be beautiful because you are God's creation. That's that person's definition of beauty. As long as this person knows, oh, this is God's creation, you're beautiful. Everything God created is good. That's the way we are actually supposed to see beauty. That all I need to see, all you need to tell me is that this is a human being created by God. And I take the person to be beautiful because God made that person the way that person is. God loves variety. That's why I look at God. All this why is being is being uh, that human beings are being born. We are not the same. Each person still comes into this world with a unique face. With a unique look. The fact that we have identical twins shows that God could have made all of us to look the same. And that I'm sure God just gives us to just show us that see, I could have made all of you to look the same. But you see, I keep turning out new faces all the time. God is awesome. He's never exhausted. Alright, let me move on because I don't want this video to be too long. I'm, I'm getting excited myself. Now, there are two types of beauty. Corruptible beauty and incorruptible beauty. That means that the 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 physical beauty can be corrupted even the beauty of the soul can be corrupted but the there is a beauty that is from god that beauty has to do with a meek and quiet spirit that has to do with your inner life your relationship with jesus that's that's that that's the real beauty of our life no matter how handsome i look you know no matter how handsome i may look if I'm going into sin, committing adultery, fornication, you know, doing no manner of evil, I'm not going to look beautiful, you know. But no matter how you think I look physically, if my life is in conformity with Christ, I have an incorruptible seed. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 4, you know, so there is corruptible beauty, there is incorruptible beauty. Now, 
it doesn't mean something is wrong with the corruptible beauty. Like, like I have my own corruptible beauty now. The way I look. To some people, I may look, oh, this guy is handsome. To some, he doesn't look good at all. You know, but whatever is what, some, I, I have a look. But one day, it's going to co be corrupted. One day, I will die. All this, my, my choppy everything <laughs> will decay. My teeth, I will look scary. But my soul, that incorruptible will be with the Lord by the grace of God. You know, so that's incorruptible, that's corruptible ah, beauty. Now, so when you look at external beauty, uh, natural beauty, um, there are, there are, I want to talk about types of external beauty. There is natural beauty and there is artificial beauty. That's talking about beauty externally. I'm not talking about um, uh, incorruptible beauty or beauty by faith. No, I'm just talking about the physical uh, beauty. Now, the, the natural beauty is the way you look when you are naked. For example, take away all your clothes and stand. That's the way God made you to be. Nothing artificial. That's your natural beauty. That's the way God created you to be. Now, artificial beauty is the one, like I said earlier, where you use, when you put things on, like I'm wearing clothes now, I'm wearing a powder, you know, so that my face does not look oily in the video. You know, I've added some things. That's, that's been a little bit artificial. You know, so there is your external beauty. You can look at it from either the natural or artificial uh, point of view. Now, what are the nature of this physical beauty? One, it fades. It fades. You know, <laughs> I've seen people. You know, when I was much younger, you know, I was this lady. I I used to like this this girl so much, and she was just beautiful, very beautiful. But I didn't have the liver to talk to her. <laughs> Time passed. She got married. Uh, you know had a child and then one day i saw her and i couldn't believe it you know what the, what that came to my mind is so if i had married her is this how she's going to now turn out to look and that was where i began to learn that beauty is temporal beauty fades away either before you die or after you die it will surely fade away it depreciates you know once you give back to a child they start appreciating then it gets with time you start depreciating whether you like it or not, we will all depreciate. I don't know what stage I am now, whether I'm appreciating or I'm depreciating. But we will eventually reach our climax and start depreciating. If you see my dad now, he's 80-something, 80 85 or there about years old. I love him so much. His skin has changed. It's not, it's not the dad I used to know, you know, while growing up strong. Take us. I used to have confidence that, yeah, my dad is there for me and so, but he's, he's old now. His skin has changed, but I'm grateful to God he's still alive. I'm so happy to, I'm so happy that God gives us that grace. So then it can be lost in an instant. The physical beauty can be lost in an instant. Ah, no, a particular lady some years back, and I met her and I was talking to her casually about Christ and, and so on. I didn't take it too serious myself, to be honest. Um, and then she went for a program, and while she was there, she got bumped from head to toe. You know, we can lose beauty in a moment. You can be, there was a time I was sick for a long time, and I became so slim, and I'm sure many of you have seen that. People can fall sick, and everything can just change. It, overnight, some can have accident. I've seen very pretty, by human standard, people, uh, or handsome, or beautiful, get accident break their spinal cord and their wheelchair it changes their body you know the upper part of the body becomes muscular the lower part becomes thinner and, and so it's not their making so it's just to tell us that it can be lost in a in a moment it's temporary okay it's temporary and then it's misleading it's misleading that's why the the scripture says lost not after her beauty in your heart Lost not after her beauty in your in your heart. He said, "Beauty is deceitful." You see, he said, "Charm is temporal, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised." You don't be deceived. You see, somebody look. No, you, do you know that somebody can look so beautiful to you now, and tomorrow the person doesn't look like that again. You can see somebody on on social media, and the person looks great, and then you meet the person in real life, and you are like, "What is this?" Is because beauty is deceitful. 
beauty will deceive you it will con convince you that this is ah this go after this person and then after a while you discover that there's nothing about it then let's go to ugliness what exactly what, what is ugliness like i mentioned earlier why do we say people are ugly uh, I want to say that it is sin that brought about ugliness. When God created the world, everything was perfect. Until Adam and Eve sinned, that brought ugliness into the creations of God. But I want to also say that uh, ugliness can be a creation of man. For example, when somebody is malnutritioned, somebody doesn't grow or get medical attention. They don't look beautiful. You know, check those countries, advanced countries where you have a lot of people who are well fed that food is not basically their problem. They are, they are, you see all of them looking good, essentially. You know, you see all of them looking good. But when you come to a situation, a, a country where people have suffered and so on, you know, people they could have grown up to look so handsome and beautiful. They are not looking like that. Why? Because they've been denied by human processes. So it can be created uh, um, artificially. And that's why I gave that example. At times it could just be judgmental. Just because we don't have understanding, we feel that this person is ugly. The person is not ugly. God created that person to look that way. That's when you remove the natural factor. If, if there was no natural, uh, human factor rather, that could have hindered that person to grow and develop properly, then you should understand that that person is, uh, is, is God's creation. Now, you need to know that if you're in Christ, you're beautiful. You're complete in Christ. Don't allow people to, to be the one that determine whether you're beautiful or not. You know, why do you feel happy when somebody tells you you are beautiful? Why do you think that affirmation must come from somebody else? It could easily have come from you. But I want to tell you it's coming from God. You are beautiful. He made you beautiful. All right? And um, ultimately, we all know that when we all pass through our gayness, when we die, we all go through that process. The body will depreciate, things will not look beautiful. People can die and within a few hours, they, they, they become something else. So we must be humble. We must understand that this body is a gift. It's a gift, you know. That's why we must understand the purpose of the body. Jesus said, uh, 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 a body has thou prepared before me. He said, God has no delight in offerings and sacrifices, but a body has thou prepared before me. As it is written, of me in your word i have come to do your will oh god this body is a vehicle given to us to do the will of god it's not it's not something to worship you know people 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 spend a lot of money on this physical body on these temporal things that's that they are so concerned about it they stand in front of mirror and makeup and makeup and makeup and do all, all manner of things time they cannot spend with scriptures time they can't spend for prayer they can spend it on their ears they can spend it on their nails they can spend it doing massage doing all kind of things don't get me wrong i'm not saying that you can't you shouldn't take care of your body that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that the emphasis should not be on your body it should be on your soul because the body ultimately will be destroyed so why are you investing on something that you know that will be destroyed why not invest on something that's going to be eternal which is your soul so the world and beauty that's the next thing I'm, I'm discussing now the world and beauty like i said what one try to set a standard of beauty you must reject that standard in your heart don't let the world determine for you what is beautiful or what is not beautiful you are beautiful you must understand that you see the world standard has a problem for example many of you may have may know ronaldo or messi these are popular football players if ronaldo and messi comes to the classroom with a lot of people they probably will not perform well they probably will not do well they may fail some they may fail most of their subjects why because that is a standard football is a standard they can excel in that they can't excel in this so don't let somebody who can excel in one thing now tell you because you can't excel in that thing you're a failure that's the way the world system works but you see god created us with different talent with different abilities with different looks for different purposes there's a reason why I'm a brown man. <laughs> Somebody say I'm a black man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> There's a reason why I have this king color that I carry. It's part of the plan of God for my life. He could easily have made me to look like Arab, to be a Chinese, to be a Caucasian, or so on. There's a reason for it. So don't allow the world to define beauty for you. You know? People, beautiful people, people who are defined to be beautiful in the world have advantage. Whether you like it or not, I, I know organizations that when you look at their staff, you know that they were deliberate in their selections. 
they selected a particular group of people that the world has have defined to be beautiful so people who look a certain way may have certain advantage in the world but i want to tell you with god there is no there is no advantage we are all the same god will treat us equally and don't feel bad because oh because this person looks this way that's why this person got this thing don't worry what is yours god is gonna give it to you god will not deny you what is yours because of the way we look you know i used to say that, that if god was looking at Luke, somebody like me wouldn't even be a preacher because I know there are so many handsome, wonderful men on earth today that I can't even, <laughs> I'm not, I don't even come close to them. You know, but God is gracious. He doesn't look at all of those things. The Bible says man looks at outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. That's what matters uh, to God. So then the world system recruits beautiful people for immorality. You see, uh, beauty is a gift by God. I will get there soon. Beauty is a gift by God. But the devil takes advantage of it. So when you look at people who do porn stars or who do, what's it called? All these movie or uh, music videos and so on. They actually look good. They look great. Some have enhanced it, but they look great. You know why? The devil targets those people. Did you notice that while growing up, if you have a, a, a lady among you who is beautiful, you know, I've defined that beauty that is a human judgment. It's a societal judgment that we've come to see certain features and say, this person is beautiful. You notice that that lady will have a lot of men running after her. The devil is smart. The devil knows the kind of men, you know, women that people want to see on TV. People want to see on, on video and so on. And so he recruits them. He goes after them. That's, that, that's the reason for the burden of beauty, that if, if somebody is defined to be beautiful in this world, the person carries a lot of burden, a lot of burden. When you check their social media, there are people writing them always, they like them, uh, they love them. We, we, we did an experiment in which we created a fake Facebook account and put a, a beautiful, you know, in quotes, woman picture there and so on. And within, within 24 hours or so, more than 5,000 fan requests. You know, thousands of messages. I love you. You are a beautiful person. You, men just kept flocking. Just kept, keep on flocking this, this, this fake account. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, so in the world, that's what happened in the world. So the devil goes after people that looks great and recruits them. That's why we must not shy away from preaching the gospel to everybody. Because the devil will come after them. The devil also knows what he's doing. The devil is not going to recruit somebody that is not going to be seductive, is not going to catch attention. The devil is going to look for someone that can catch men's attention, that can catch people's attention. He's going to look for a man that can catch women's attention. So we must uh, understand that. So a lot of what we see in the world are just fake and artificial things. And when you watch TV and uh, they are nothing, they are, they are emptiness. You know, they... There are a lot of artificial things created that they call beauty. Um, there are a lot of shows that I believe that Satan had planned and is, and is executing the world on our TVs just to convince people that they are not beautiful enough. So he packages different kinds of people and put them on TV. And when you look at them and compare them to yourself, you think you are not good enough. Why did some people look this big? It's a, it's a strategic plan of the kingdom of darkness to make you look bad to make you think god didn't create you well you know <laughs> it's not everything that we see on tv that is just uh, that is ordinary many of those things are from the pit of hell and they have a motive behind them so you we, we've got to understand all of this how about the word of god and beauty now there's no standard for physical beauty in the word of god we, we identify that people are beautiful because they are God's creation. End of discussion. That's how we look at it. You don't stand advantage with God because of your looks. In the world, you, start, you stand some advantage because of your looks. But with God, it doesn't matter. Like I said, somebody like me, if God was to look at how handsome people are, somebody like me, God, God will not use me. <laughs> but I believe that I look great for my purpose and I look great. You know, you know, I, there was a time I did something. I was standing in front of the mirror and I said to myself, Shagun, do you know you're actually very handsome? You're a very handsome man. And I convinced myself and I believed it. And I started walking 
<laughs> working it out in my life. Why did I do that? Not for pride. I believe God created me. And I say, if God created me, I can't be God's creation and not be, be handsome. So I said to myself, I'm asking. So I've always had a perception of myself that I'm handsome. I don't need anybody. I'm not waiting for somebody to tell me, oh, you look good as a man. No, I don't need that. Thank you if you say it, but <laughs> I already convinced myself you can't change, you can't change my mind against that. You know. So the Bible says that beauty is deceitful, uh, both to the carrier and to the looker. You see, the person who thinks he or she is beautiful can be deceived by that beauty. And then the person who is looking at the person who he or she thinks is beautiful may also be deceived. So beauty is deceitful. That's why the Bible says beauty. Is deceitful. You know when they say something is deceitful, like um, this is this looks like a, a a white material, you know. But then you get close and you now discover that uh, it's 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 a black material, you know, something like that. You know, deceit is not the way it really is. It shows you to be something, but it's not really um, that thing, uh, you know. Job said something, he said, I've, I've made a covenant with my eye not to lust after uh, anybody in, 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 his, in his heart. But God, God can make people to look beautiful the way the world even demands beauty. We found that with the daughters of Job. I would say there was nobody as beautiful as them. Now that's comparison. That means that the way God created them in the societal definition of society they were the most beautiful so god understand how we define beauty also and it can it can make people to actually look like that so the daughters of Job, a classical example in the scripture that god understand that our definition of beauty and god made the, the the daughters of job they were so beautiful to look at you know so um now uh, 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 beauty attracts temporary attention. That's why Jesus said, lost, the, uh, when you look at a woman and lost after in your heart. The scripture actually says in Proverbs, lost not after a beauty in your heart. Beauty attracts attention. That's what the word of God teaches about beauty. It attracts attention. But there is the good news is this. Beauty does not control your will. When he says, lost not, after her beauty in your heart. That means that you have the control, not the loss. So beauty does not control your will. Beauty may attract your eye, but should not control your will. Once it controls your will, then you are you're already lost. In. What about Satan and beauty? Well, Satan himself um, was corrupted by beauty. And that should tell us something about beauty. Ezekiel uh, 28 you know, that should, warn, that should warn us. You see, generally, anything people have that others don't have can become a source of pride. If I have money and people don't around me don't have money, I become proud. If I can play something or do something better than others, I can become easily, I can easily become proud. Satan had a beauty that corrupted him. So as you as human men, you've got to be careful that the physical thing that God has placed in you, and even the incorruptible beauty, don't allow it to make you to become proud. You know, uh, Satan causes people to be restless in their heart, telling them they are not beautiful. <laughs> Satan doesn't want people to have peace of mind. So he keeps telling them you are not beautiful. He keeps showing them other people. He keeps making them to compare themselves to themselves. And the people think these are their thoughts. People think, okay, they are just being logical. You're not being logical. Understand that God created you. You are beautiful. End of discussion. Let it end there. Anything outside this is from the devil. Once the devil begins to tell you that, oh, you don't look as great as this person. And then the devil has raised, has raised some, some, some people on TV doing all kind of shows to say that they are standard of beauty and so on. You know, people without real beauty in their lives. Those are the people you are emulating. People that will die and their body will wither away. Don't let the devil tell you... Uh, at that light. Like I said, Satan recruits people. Satan, please understand this. The devil goes after people that are attractive to recruit, to do different things. He recruits them deliberately. He does it through human vessel. You, you're not going to see him. The Bible says if they had known, they would not have crucified the Son of Glory. 
That's the devil. That if the devil had known, he would not have crucified Jesus. But where was the devil when Jesus was being crucified? We didn't see the devil. We only had that Satan entered into the heart of Judas. But we didn't see the devil. But he was there behind the scene. So understand this, that Satan look for people to recruit because of their physical look. Don't allow the devil to use your physical look. It belongs to God. Let it be used only for God. Uh, beauty and sex. Um, you are no more sexier. A, a cloth doesn't make you sexy. Let me say this. It's your body that is sexy. Take a sexy cloth and put it on a baboon. Will it look sexy? No. It's not the cloth. It's your body. The woman body is created to be sexy. It is the woman body that is hot, if I can use that word. Not... Not the cloth. You know, people say this cloth is hot. This cloth is sexy. There's nothing uh, like that. Beautiful women have no advantage in the bedroom. The fact that the, you are judged to be beautiful by human standard doesn't mean that you, you, you stand any advantage in the bedroom. In fact, the, the, the sex organs are created to function the same way. It does not matter how you look. They all function the same way, you know. And we thank God, we thank God for that. Uh, when it comes to marrying, beauty and marrying, um we all have different tastes different varieties and i believe god created us that way and we should we should appreciate that compliment your spouse appreciate your spouse beauty stop looking at other people stop stop wishing this was your wife because that person just looks like that that's why the bible says lost not after a beauty in your heart you just see someone say, ah, i wish this person is my wife all that you see is just physical beauty you don't even know this person you don't know maybe you are bringing a devil to the house <laughs> so uh, you, you've got to be to be careful. Be contented with how your spouse looks. Don't force your spouse. Don't make your spouse feel incomplete or the need to fix his or, his or herself artificially. Except that people should just do things that makes them healthy and fit. Don't don't make your your spouse to become restless. Always remember that beauty is is vain. Emphasis should be placed on true beauty, which is the inner inner beauty which is the beauty of an incorruptible seed i uh, remember that christ loved us as the way we are in terms of the way we look so love love your spouse the way christ loves it says husband love your wife not the way you want not the way you think not the way you feel but as christ loved the church Christ didn't love us because we are handsome. If that's the case, many of us will not even be qualified for salvation. So love your spouse that way. Never love your spouse based on physical things. Jesus didn't love us for that. And his own love is not reciprocal. And Jesus didn't wait until we are fixed before he loved us. So love your spouse uh, that same way. So beauty as a gift. Beauty is a gift. It must be protected. Uh, it must be used for the glory of God. It must be used to serve God. Esther, Daniel, Joseph, David. You know, uh, Daniel, part of what qualified him to be selected was because he was handsome. The same thing, Esther. She did a spiritual work later on, but it was a physical, human, physical beauty that qualified her. You are using your human physical beauty to sleep everywhere in hotels, to, to do pictures all over the place, you know, to, to show yourself naked all over the place. You are wasting the gift of God. You've got to understand that you can use it for the glory of God. God gave you everything we have. God gave it to us for a definite, uh, for a definite reason. So it's a gift. Use it to serve God. The burden of beauty. Now I want to talk about the burden of beauty. It caused the first sin, Satan's sin because of beauty. So be careful. If you think you are beautiful, it can lead you to sin. It can also easily lead to pride. It can lead to self-confidence. You, you are confident in yourself. You know, that may sound like something good. No. Always trust in the Lord. The Bible says, trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't trust in any other thing. Stop trusting your beauty. Some people think, oh, if I knock this door, it will be open. Why? Because they feel that um, they are beautiful. You can become a target of the kingdom of darkness because it wants to recruit you. You know, when we were in the universities or what, what they call um, college in some part of the world, I had a friend who was going to the gym and he, would, he was building his body. 
He was the one cultists were running after to recruit. Nobody came after me because me, I was going about fellowship. <laughs> I was just reading my book quietly. So I didn't have any quality for them to look for in me. So the devil always look for that. So be careful. Don't let the devil recruit you to use you. Uh, there will be too much pressure from men and women. And you've got to know how to handle it. You may check some of our videos. We have a lot of videos on this YouTube channel on marriage, relationship, and so on. You may want to check uh, some of them. Uh, there, is, there, is, um, there is the story of Abigail. The Bible says she's a woman with understanding and beauty. You know That's how it should be. Don't just be somebody with beauty. Have understanding. That understanding or wisdom from the from the scripture from the word of god be somebody filled with wisdom uh from the word of god there will be pressure from the world okay but you must not fall into it these are some of the burden of 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 beauty hopefully by god's grace uh, if god enables that i'll be able to produce a book on this subject uh because there's so much to cover uh on this particular subject uh so it could open wrong door in the name of opportunity. <laughs> Beauty can do that. Door that should not be open to you may be open to you just because of the way you look. And you take advantage of it and then you begin to run into problem. You can cause people to fall. You know? You can cause people to fall. You can not be not 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 that beauty. But the way you use that beauty, you can use it to cause other people to fall. It could be misleading. Look at Samuel. He wanted to anoint Eliab king. When he saw him, saw his physical structure, he felt like, wow, this is a king. So be very careful. Be very careful. Then beauty. You know anything beautiful we want to possess? That's watch your heart. Don't run after beauty. That's why the Bible says, lost not after beauty in your heart. Once you see something beautiful, you want to have it. Be very careful. Um... Somebody, people who are beautiful or handsome may not readily find true love because there's something attracting them, attracting people to their life that is not right. It, or, no, not that it's not right. That um, there's not what should attract people to their life. It is just the way they look, you know. So it may attract people uh, wrongly uh, to your life. Uh, you can become useless in the end. The Bible says that uh, a woman without discretion is like a goat in the nose of a pig. You become useless to God. You, you, you waste that beauty. It means that that beauty is a gift of God to you. you know, just as God gave some people um, mercy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge and so on, God may have blessed you with your look. It is to be used for the glory of God. It's not something to be used for display. It's not something to be used to acquire things for yourself and to spoil yourself and destroy lives and destroy marriages. No. Your beauty should be used for the glory of God, not to attract immorality uh, in, into your life. Now, some Christians may be wondering, can, can a Christian do uh, cosmetic surgery and so on. Well, first, we all, all knowledge belongs to God. Every knowledge comes from God and, and belongs to God. There are people that need cosmetic surgery for life-saving reasons. Uh, somebody, if I have a cut here deep, they may have to cut part of my skin and graft it back and make it look good or, or so on. So, in, so generally, it's not wrong in itself. Uh, but it has to do with motive of your heart. What exactly are you, are you doing? Why do you want to enhance your breast? Is it because it's too big and you're having back pain, you know? Or is it because you want to attract men attention to you, you know? So this this thing has to do with motives of the heart. Uh, but we must be careful to um, whatever we do, to do it to the glory of God. What about using makeups and so on? To, like I said, well, it depends on what you call makeup. I have a video on titled "Can Christian Use Makeups and so on." You know, because we need to understand scripture. Some people have become so legalistic and religious, and they think that oh, they are the one that preaches holiness. When whereas they don't understand what holiness uh, holiness really is. You know. So before I came on this video, I used powder because if you are shooting a video and your face your face is likely to show oily, and you won't even like to watch that kind of a video now that is part of makeup you know 
say there's nothing wrong that you dress yourself and you want to look good just make sure in your heart your heart is right before god then understand that true beauty is not that physical beauty it's the incorruptible beauty the bible say that uh, let your beauty not be of plated hairs he's not saying don't don't plate your hair he's simply saying let that not define your hair it's like if i say don't let your life be based on money it doesn't mean i'm saying don't spend money i'm only telling you that god should define your life and and not money uh, how to handle aging because we, we all age eventually aging is a gift from god we must see that way that god allows you to age some people have died while you are young but god allows you to age. so appreciate it uh take good decisions that keeps you healthy into your old age eat well don't let it be when you are old they are now telling you to eat fruit vegetables and so eat rightly you know uh old age is useful to god god wants all kind of age group in the body of christ uh you are full of experience you know that you can share with other people so appreciate that your old age that it's a beauty also you know the bible said the beauty of the old man is is the gray hair so it, it's even beauty you know and i've seen people with lovely gray hair full of wisdom you know it, it actually you know so when, when we watch those chinese movies in those days you see a man with gray hair he's always a man full of wisdom who can raise other and train fighters you understand that, that's the kind of picture that comes to mind when you talk about um, uh, aging uh true and total beauty comes from god okay it is made up of a quiet and humble spirit and then it is um a reflection of the character of jesus to really become like jesus is true beauty that's the beauty you should pursue becoming like jesus christ um we will all be like Christ ultimately, you know. So the Bible says when he appears, we are all going to become like him. So true beauty is to be Christ-like. Are you Christ-like? That's what should concern you. That's what you should spend your money, your resources to achieve, if possible. The Bible says beholding his glory as in a mirror. We are being changed from one day for, to his image from glory to glory. I pray you will become like Christ. So God created physical beauty so that uh, we can understand spiritual beauty you see the physical beauty is just an illustration for us so when everything that happens about this physical beauty cannot help you to understand spiritual beauty you can now see the way physical beauty is attractive to men that's the way spiritual beauty makes us to become attractive to god sin creates ugliness sin creates ugliness but when you come to Christ and you are washed, you become beautiful. Your life changes. You become very attractive to God. Very attractive to the Spirit of God. Very attractive to angels. That's the beauty we must pursue. If you don't have that, you can say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me. Please wash me clean. And let the true beauty of Jesus Christ come into my life. Make me a child of God. Help me from henceforth to walk in, the, in your word. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your grace. Thank you for making me your child. Because I pray in the name of Christ. God bless you. If you have prayed that prayer, you may write to me. Um, just check the about section of this YouTube channel. All my address and, and contacts are available there. You may also want to... Um, subscribe to this channel by pressing the red subscribe uh, button you have there and the notification bell so that next time we drop a video you'll be able to see it like i said um hopefully if the lord helps i'll put this in a book that we can all read because there are so many things that because i don't want this video to be too long that i didn't go into details but you see god had put all this together to help us understand beauty so that we don't we are not misled now you can be at peace you know what beauty is and you know ultimately the beauty that you need is that beauty of christ and even that physical beauty is a gift that you should use well for the glory of god my name is olusha gumokulu if you have any question you want to ask please feel free to comment god bless you